ParkScan is a pre-built barcode scanner that fits on top of any smartphone application. In this video, I'll show you how to integrate it with your app in a few easy steps. Let's first check as an existing app that integrates ParkScan. As you can see, ParkScan is this small button that can be expanded and used to control uh, and tap scans. It will create actually a mini camera preview to show you where you're currently aiming at. And you can modify a few parameters on the fly to stop haptics, to go into a more target mode where you can more precisely target when you actually want to scan, or just infinity mode to scan continuously for batch scanning. And that's exactly what we want to integrate with our own app. To do that, I created a sample project that consists of one screen that contains the recycle view, currently empty, uh, and a button to clear the results. This recycle view has been already hooked up with a simple uh, adapter when I will, that I will use to show scan results. The clear button as well already hooked up. It's not really the subject of this video, so I will not cover them so much. And with that out of the way, let's get to coding. The first step for SparkGun is to create the data capture context. The data capture context is created with a license by passing it the license key that you will have registered on the Scandit website beforehand. You will then create the SparkGun setting object. This object uh, allows you to actually decide what symbologies, for example, you want to be able to scan and decode. So we're going to do the that by enabling symbologies. In this case, let's go for EAN13 and the QR code. Using these settings, we then create the Spark Scan object that actually controls the camera and the scanning uh, capabilities. And then we create the view itself, but we're going to keep a reference to the view Spark Scan view. As you can see, I'm good at naming. We create the view like this. Passing it a new instance, this takes as parameter a parent view, which is uh, the parent view where the floating button will be uh, inserted and integrated. So here we can actually pick the root of our fragment. And we pass as well the data capture context and spark an object. We then need to hook the view to the Android lifecycle. We do on resume and on pause. The idea here is uh, that doing that, we can prepare or release uh, resources that are not needed, depending on if the app is running or on pause or in the background. And just with that, actually, we will have, if we would uh, launch the app right now, on screen, the Spark Scan button already integrated into our fragment. Uh, the only thing is, of course, as it, it's not as useful because we don't do anything once we, we, we don't handle the results of the scanning, right? So we need to actually add a listener so that we can be notified whenever our Spark Scan uh, system detects and decodes a barcode. We add this listener to Spark an object. And override it on barcode scanned method. So what do we want to do here? Here we'll get the newly decoded barcode. And we'll add it to our recycle view. It's worth noting that this callback is called actually from a background thread. So here, as we want to modify something on the main thread, because UI is main, th main thread, this is Android, we actually need to make sure uh, one way or another that we modify this 
like this. And then we add to our adapter. Scan status adapter. We add the new scan result. A scan result object is actually just a simple class that takes the barcode data and the barcode symbology and will display that in the list. Nothing fancy here. And that's our all information that we can read directly from the barcode we just scanned. Something else that we can do that could be nice is to also trigger a feedback. This can be done from any thread actually. To notify you know, the, the user of the app that the scan has been actually done. Here, let's use a success feedback. And with this, we should already have a fully functioning Spark scan app. Um, all right, let's bring up the retail book that we provide. And as you can see, we can actually interact with it and start scanning barcode. You can also scan QR code. And when you look at the result list, you can see that there, all of them are here. You can also just go for the conti full continuous mode when you just scan everything in a really quick way. It can be useful for warehouse situation. And that's it, fully functioning integrated Spark scan. Of course, uh, Spark can come with several customization options out of the box. So I'm just going to show you a couple uh, just as an example, we could decide, for example, that we don't need the torch button visible. We could also decide that we don't like the colors of the floating button. And we want to change that to some bright red. And then when actually the floating button is expanded, we want it to be bright green. And just like that, when we compile and run again, yeah, we now currently have this really red and green button. Of course, probably you will not be doing this, but you could imagine using this um, functionality to adapt the button more to the theme of your app. And uh, the torch button is not visible anymore. More options are actually available out of the box, but that is everything I wanted to cover in today's video. Uh, you can actually visit scandit.com to register and try it and try all these other options by yourself.